Well, good morning, Cornerstone family. Uh, I want to say happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. We are excited today to celebrate with you. Uh, today, in honor of Father's Day, we have a taco truck. And so we're going to give each dad three free tacos. Each ticket is a taco, so we want you to enjoy your day. And we have a special surprise at the end of the service, so it's going to be a great time. Uh, last week, I'm excited, we started last week the book of John. We're going to take a real slow study through this amazing gospel, the gospel of John. John, unlike Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they all, all four gospels give us who Jesus is and what he's done and the miracles and the parables he's teaching. But John spends most of his time focused in on who Jesus is. And so he writes his gospel to help us understand who he is. And, and that's the big idea today. Uh, the threat, when John started to write his gospel, it was about 95 AD. Uh, this is after a lot of the persecution has mild down some. And, and so now the biggest threat of the church was actually false doctrine. Well, today we have the same thing. Uh, today there is a social Jesus, and then there's a biblical Jesus. And I want us to know the difference. And then the question is, which Jesus do you worship? You see, the social Jesus is the historical person. Well, of course, how can you even deny that there was a person named Jesus? And then he was a miracle worker, in, in that he accepts us. And then today, the social Jesus would say he even condones or winks his eye at sin. The biblical Jesus is beyond that. The biblical Jesus is, Jesus is eternal, creator God, life giver, who paid the penalty of our sins and calls us to live in his light. So which Jesus do you worship? Well, today, as we dig deeper into it, our, our big idea is this, to, to know who Jesus is and to place our confident trust in him as our Lord and Savior. If you want real life change, then you need to know the biblical Jesus and place your full trust in him as your Lord and Savior. Our uh, passage today that we're going to look at is in John chapter 1. We're going now from verse 15 on, and we're breaking up this first chapter to three portions so we can go a little bit deeper and meditate on it a little bit more. So let me read this. Uh, this is John the Apostle, the disciple of Jesus, writing about John the Baptizer or John the Baptist, Okay. I know, two Johns, a little confusing, but I'll help you understand who's who. So John the Baptist, or the baptizer, testifies concerning him. He cries out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. Now it's interesting, John the Baptist is older, but he understands who Jesus is. For the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. And I wonder if I paused right now, could you tell me a blessing that you have received from the Lord? As we celebrate Dad's Day today and we have the taco truck out there, I hope that we can have conversations and that we could just share some of God's blessings, his mercy, his grace that's in our lives. Verse 17, now he says, For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Now just pause for a moment. Moses, the hero, one of the heroes of the faith, right? The law, God gave us his word, his law, how we are to live our lives. What could be greater than the law? But he says, Jesus gives us grace God's love and truth. 
that God wants a relationship with us and he's made a way that we can have a relationship with him through his son. No one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. I want to read that verse again because I don't want it to go by us too fast. Understand who Jesus is. Look at verse 18. No one's ever seen God except the one and only who's at the Father's side. We're talking about Jesus. Do you know him? No one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him known to us. He's made us know who God is. Jesus is God in flesh. Emmanuel, God with us. Now today, as we get into more of John the Baptist and his testimony of Jesus, we need to understand a little background so we can fully grasp what we're going to learn today. And so I'm going to nerd out on you just a little bit, right? So I, I hope you can hang on with me here for a moment. But giving you some background, John is going to refer to Jesus as the Lamb of God. Now that phrase, wh where does that come from? Well, John's audience knew who the Lamb of God was. The, the audience that John was teaching to, they understood the whole idea of Passover because for the last 1,400 years, each of these families were celebrating. Once a year, they'd gather together and they'd have a lamb brought into the home for four days and then that lamb would be slaughtered in remembrance of God delivering his people out of the bondage, out of the slavery of Egypt. So I'm going to take you back in time. This is Exodus chapter 12, verse 1 through 14. Israel has been in bondage and slavery for about 400 years. God has put on display his power against the gods of Egypt. Imagine you're a family, and it's been a bizarre couple of months as you've seen water turn to blood. It's not drinkable anymore. It's nasty. You, you've seen gnats. You've seen flies and frogs and hail, and, and it's just like, what's going on? This is as bizarre as it gets, and, and it's like nature is warring against nature, and then... There's one more plague. Death is coming to every firstborn man and firstborn animal. But God gives a way of escape. He gives a way out. And it's going to be through an innocent lamb. So just picture yourself with your family of five or six Waiting, is death going to pass us over? Because you know now, God is true to his word. And he's more powerful than any of the gods in Egypt. So let's read this, this passage here out of Exodus. Starting in verse 1, chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. God is changing the calendar. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share with one with their nearest neighbor. Having taken into account the number of people there are, you are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year-old males without defect, and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month 
when all the people of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Now just pause for a moment. A lamb. An innocent lamb. A one-year-old male lamb that is perfect without blemish. Why? Because it's innocent. It doesn't deserve to die. You're going to feel the cost of this. Oh, and you're going to take it into your house on the 10th. And on the 14th, you're going to slaughter it. Let me ask you this question. You take a one-year-old lamb that is absolutely perfect in every way, you bring it into your house of five or six kids for four days, and you're going to take care of that lamb. What's going to happen? Can you imagine the bonding and the naming, and, and then you're maybe putting a hat on it, and it's like, you know, your kids are just loving this animal. And after four days... You're going to slaughter this animal so death will pass you by. This is the first Passover. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides of the tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. That same night they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or cooked in water, but roasted over the fire, head, legs, inner parts. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some is left till morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it, with your cloak tucked into your belt, your clothing, so you are ready to go. Your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to commemorate for the generations to come. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. Wow. So when John points out the Lamb of God, you need to know this. These families, they, they understood the the background. They have been celebrating it throughout generations. That God brought them out of slavery. That God protected them from death. That God saved them. And God was more powerful than all of the gods of Egypt. Well, there's one more passage we need to read so that we understand what's going on here in John Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. This is the last book of the Old Testament. God, the prophet, God uh, spoke through the prophet Malachi and says, See, I tell you, I will send you the prophet Elijah before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children in the hearts of the children to their fathers, or else I will come and strike the land with a curse. It's an interesting prophecy. The need is for our homes. Not just our worship of the one true God, but also that we get it, that we show love and grace and mercy to one another. And God draws attention that there is a problem that's deeper than just raising your hands in worship. There's a problem in our hearts, in our relationships that only he can solve. But this is a message of hope that God can solve that, that God can bring healing and mercy to the brokenhearted. Our worship must have impact on one another. 
Now, after 400 years of silence, God breaks the silence and speaks. He speaks to a high priest named Zechariah. It was his time to offer up worship, and, and he goes in to uh, start to worship the Lord and to offer up worship, and an angel, Angel Gabriel, comes and speaks to him and says, hey, Zechariah, guess what? God heard your prayer about having a kid, and so you're going to have a boy. And, you know, if, if you can imagine, Zechariah, he's old. He's like, yeah, that, that, I prayed that 50 years ago. I know. God's timing, man, what's going on here? And because he doubts, God takes away his voice, and he is silent and not, unable to speak as he comes out. A few months later, Elizabeth, she gets pregnant. And they have a baby boy. And when they ask Zachariah what his name is, he says, John, and he's able to speak again. This is what the angel said to Zachariah about John the Baptist. And he will turn many of the sons of Israel back to the Lord, their God. There's going to be a revival. It is he who will go as a forerunner before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children. And the disobedient to the attitude of the righteous so as to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. There's a sign of hope here. God is going to start to bring healing and families. He's going to get our hearts right so that we truly worship him, the one and only true God, and we start to show love and grace and mercy and forgiveness to one another as family. A sign of hope. And now John the baptizer uh, he's out in the desert. So we fast forward 30 years. He's out in the desert. He's preaching. <laughs> he's preaching and, and he's telling, um, I, well, one, just take a look at the guy. He, he, he's different than any other preacher, any other rabbi that you've seen in the city. Mark 1 tells us he was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and his diet was locust and wild honey. Well, of course you'd have honey if you're going to eat locusts because how do you get that down? He's different. His message, in Luke 3, we read that his message is this to the crowds, and he says this to the crowds. It's funny, I remembered it, that he, he said it just to the priests and the Pharisees. Uh -uh. He said, this is a message to everyone. You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And people are still coming out. Can you imagine if, you know, welcome to Cornerstone, you brood of vipers. What are you, a bunch of snakes trying to escape the flames of hell? And can you imagine that kind of message? I'm just like, who's coming, who's coming back for that? And yet, people are coming out to the desert. They're, they're not going to the city where it's nice. They're going to the desert. They're getting baptized in muddy waters. They're repenting of their sins. They're turning to God. They're, they're turning to their families, and God is bringing healing and reconciliation in their families. What has happened is people have realized something's got to change. You know, you can only blame the government so long the economy so long until you realize the problem is with you. And that's what John is saying. The problem isn't, isn't with the government. Yeah, it's messed up. And John did preach against Herod and, and he did preach the truth. But he spoke to every heart to get right with God. So now... Let's get into our study. And verses 19 through um, a few verses here. We're not going to go through a lot today, but I want us to have that background so we understand when John makes this announcement, when he testifies who Jesus is, we ourselves have an aha moment. 
that we understand, wow, this is who Jesus is. One truth today I want us to focus on, just one. Who is Jesus? He is the Lamb of God. He's the Lamb of God. John 1, 19 and 20. Now this was John's testimony when the Jews of Jerusalem sent priests and the Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Christ. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? No. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the desert. Make straight the way for the Lord. He's referencing Isaiah 40. We need to get right. We need to prepare our hearts. We need to repent of our sins, get right with God, and get right with our families. Verse 24, Now some Pharisees who had been sent questioned him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John replied, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know. He is one who comes after me, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany on the other side of the Jordan where John was baptizing. And the next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. God's Lamb. This is the one and final sacrifice. So now he's bringing in Passover and he's bringing in Isaiah 53. One of the most clear prophecies about the Messiah, the Savior of the world. God, Emmanuel, God with us. This is what we read in Isaiah 53. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us have turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. As a sheep before her shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. I myself did not know him, John says, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit of God, the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. I would not have known him except that one who sent me to baptize with water told me the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is he who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. If you want to be born of God, born into the family of God, it must be through the Lamb of God, God's one and only Son. Do you realize that on Palm Sunday, it was the 10th day of the new year. 
That's when they picked the lamb for the temple. They picked Jesus. He offered his life as a sacrifice for our sins, our shame, our guilt. He paid for it all. He's the Lamb of God. Only he can save. Only he can forgive. The question today is, will you choose him as your Savior, the Lamb of God, who paid for your sins, who died for you, and on the third day rose again? We each have a choice. We can continue to worship the social Jesus, the historical Jesus, the miracle worker that has no power to really change our lives. Or we can worship the biblical Jesus who is God, who is Savior, who is Creator, who is the Lamb of God who laid down His life to save us. Would you pray with me? The heads bowed and our eyes closed. I want to ask you, have you accepted Jesus as the Lamb of God who paid for your sins? Have you accepted him as your Lord and Savior? And if you have, worship him and thank him and praise him. But if today you realize you've watered down who Jesus is, You've not truly accepted the biblical Jesus. You can make adjustment. You can make a change. You, you can change everything right now by going to him, confessing your sins and inviting him into your life as your Lord and Savior. He'll forgive your sins. His Holy Spirit will come into your life and you can experience his power to change. So if that's your desire, pray along with me and just say, Dear Jesus, today I understand more fuller than I ever have, more clearer that you are the Son, the one and only Son of God, the Lamb of God who laid down your life for my life. I ask that you would come into me and that you would forgive me of my sins of my shame and my guilt, that you bring healing and restoration. And Lord, there's a lot of brokenness. I need your forgiveness, your mercy, your healing power. I pray this, I ask this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I want to encourage you as you walk with the Lord. If you made a decision, let me know. If, if you would like to be baptized as a believer, we'll be doing that this summer at the beach and in here. And so if you're interested, that would be a great next step for you. Um, just on our QR code here, you can look that um, and connect with us. And we'd love to celebrate with you. Also, we have this journal through the book of John. We're doing just a few chapters at a time. So I have chapters one, two, and three right now. If you're interested in that, it's online. You can download it. If you'd like something mailed to you, we can do that as well. We just want to help you grow in your faith. And now we're going to continue to celebrate this morning and uh, celebrate with our dads. Until next week, God bless. <laughs>